Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Abby. My name is Anna. We are here to chat about van life, our first impressions, our first thoughts, and we feel we are able to talk about it because we have been on a rather long trip, extended period of time where we've been li living out this dude. Why are we doing this? Uh, you mean the first impressions or living out of that dude? Out of that dude? <laughs> Well, we are on a long old project, 55 days, Abby is cycling 2,000 miles, I'm driving them and um, that is all to take in the whole of the UK, all the way from John O'Groats down to Land's End via all of the national parks. I'm doing this because that is what, our, our, what our map <laughs> looks like. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, so um, cycling and driving and hiking. So we're hiking to the highest points of each national park, uh, working in partnership with National Parks UK. And it's all for mental health awareness and um, to raise a national and international conversation about environmental conservation and what we can do as users of outdoor spaces to help step up and protect wild spaces that we so love to get out in. So we are on day 42 today, I believe it is and uh, we just wanted to sit wow. down and have a chat about sort of our first thoughts and impressions of van lifing. So now that you know why we're van lifing, I think it'd be good to jump into sort of what we did pre-trip to prepare ourselves for living for two months out of this van. Regarding expectations then, um, you know, I think both of us have been very exposed to the whole van life scene, which has come up on Instagram and across social media which is quite like glorified, always quite whitewashed, always very clean and tidy. So, you know, I think I was kind of very, like I was being skeptical from the word go, like being somebody who's, you know, an avid user of outdoor spaces, used to camping, knowing what weather is like and how wet things get. Um, you know, for me, that sort of head was on, like what is this really gonna be like in a van? But Anna is, is a much more practical thinker in, in some ways. So when it was coming down to packing, um, you know, she was on food. I, I said to her, like, what should I put stuff in? Like, should I bring a duffel bag or a suitcase? And you were straight out like, no, don't worry about that because you knew that everything would have, find a home in the van. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I made sure that when we packed, um, that we put everything in either, you know, soft bags, either a, a yeah, travel bag or even just you know whatever bags because it was just really getting it from the house into the car and then into the van and in the van it would have a cupboard and could either be in a bag but a suitcase or anything bulky would would be completely useless there we had quite a few cardboard boxes um just because we we sort of emptied the, the cupboards the food cupboards um and and took quite a lot of food and um, yeah otherwise just had a a variety let's say of of bags and boxes and and um, plastic bags and whatnot that you could then also use for other things you know if you bring a shopping bag with your clothes the clothes gonna end up in the cupboard but then you have a shopping bag that you will end up using because you you will have to go shopping for two months <laughs> um, and yeah so the the it looked a little bit like moving out really fast because there were <laughs> the house was an explosion <laughs> and and then there were those boxes that we were gonna put in the car and take and it was uh, I found it was really quite straightforward in the sense of just being quite minimal with what you with what you packed in all of the fields of life so to speak whether it be toiletries or clothes um, or, or kitchen utensils you know I love cooking and I knew that we were not going to make any sacrifices on our on our nutrition and on the food variety that we wanted to be able to prepare in the van but you don't need a lot for it it's not like you need your seven different pots and pans and lids and this and that and you know you have to have a different spoon for every food and dish that you make it's just a very small selection it's four forks four spoons and four knives because we knew at the max capacity it would be four of us that that needed catering for 
and then it's a bowl for most of the dishes and you oh, pretty no. much set <laughs> really but yeah so that was uh, the overall initial intention to just pack as minimal as possible and in a practical way use things that you can use for multiple reasons mm. no that's yeah. exactly it and you know sort of what Anna is saying is um, hinting at our different uses of the van to a degree so you know what with me cycling pretty much every single day like I'm you know the van for me is a place to eat sleep rest um, and you know whatever refuel but for you it's it's a pretty much permanent base so I thought it'd be mm. quite cool if we jumped into sort of what it has been like using a van as opposed to a car as a mode of transport and then what it's been like using a van as opposed to a tent as a form of accommodation mm. So let's start with transport, since that's sort of your mm. realm. So yeah, I've, uh, I've had previous experiences with driving vans or bigger vehicles, um, just from life, you know, moving vans and, and yada yada, just a variety really. Um, driven a camper van before, a proper, you know, proper big camper van, um, or caravan, as you'd probably call it. Um, and this thing is definitely a, a bit, um, what's the word for it? Just not as bulky as a camper van, let's more say, compact. or caravan. Yes, and a little bit more can go better around corners. Though, um, especially in small country lanes, in the lakes and in Wales, there has been the odd, oh, <laughs> the dales. <laughs> Oh, three point turning just to take <laughs> to take a turn into another lane um, but overall I don't find it too hard what has made it a bit trickier to the general handling is that we have a bike carrier in the back that holds both both of our bikes but because it is sitting in front of the back camera of the van as soon as you put rear in it's just this constant beeping Beep. and it, it, it just makes it so hard to actually concentrate and then with the uh, inbuilt camera um, it actually is quite out of proportion I would say what is being displayed in uh, terms to what the reality of distance is so there were a couple of occasions where I just to make sure I'm not you know breaking breaking the bike asked Abby to step out especially in the dark mm, the um, to to just see how far how far I actually have to to you know move the car with um, overall I have to say it's quite nice at times um, with certain drivers because the respect towards the van is slightly different um, to that towards a normal little car um, so I always enjoy that experience. Um, Road hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With me at the bottom as a, as a bike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, you don't have much to say there, do you? No. <laughs> um, In the traffic jams I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, so overall I've quite enjoyed it. I don't find it too different it can be stressful you know in in urban um, areas where parking is just a tiny bit trickier there is you know the odd small supermarket where it's just a little bit uh, tighter to to get into a parking lot and then you don't quite fit on one space especially with the bikes in the back so you generally have to look for um, a space where there are two behind each other and then you're just going to get used to spaces in the end so so all of those little things are a little bit tougher in a van but overall I find it a very straightforward easy and literally elevated driving experience check her out and it's been quite economical on fuel as well hasn't it yeah very yeah. very much so I have to say that really surprised me so where I feel like I can chime in is more on the van versus tent accommodation side of things. So previously having, um, you know, looked at all of these Instagram images and these YouTube videos where everything is all nicely lit and clean and slick. And for me, I'm like, well, have you guys even stepped outside before? Because it seems very impractical to 
to partner the two, especially when you're truly connecting with nature, you tend to end up, end up muddy and wet. Um, so, I, you know, I, 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 for me, I was very interested to see what it was going to be like living in a van. I, you know, love being in a tent for the fact that it's so simple. Mm. Your life is stripped right back. You're connected with nature from well, every moment, really, because you've got a piece of fabric or sometimes two pieces of fabric just literally separating you from the sky above you and the ground below you. So I love that fully immersive experience. But having said that, in wet weather, it can get pretty miserable pretty quickly. <laughs> So, you know, that's where I've been able to see in the past that having a van could appeal to me, which is where, you know, you want to go away for the weekend, it's due to be a bit rainy, you don't want to bother with a tent, so you chuck it in the van and off you go on an adventure. So, I have to be honest, you know, I have found the van great um, in the sense that we have to have so many different things for this trip. We have walking stuff, cycling stuff, life stuff, work stuff, and everything in between. <laughs> um, and it all fits which is great and you couldn't have that if this was a you know chuck it in the panniers kind of expedition <laughs> it would be a completely different trip and we probably have or probably managed scotland but would not be where we are today in terms of the the trip you know that we we wouldn't be we would still be 41 days in but we wouldn't be as far south um so that has really opened the doors to a different type of trip for me um and the accommodation side of things has been wonderful you know we've stayed on campsites uh for many nights we've got the camping caravan club supporting us with this project and our mission which we're eternally grateful for and just literally rocking up at one of those sites is like arriving home at the end of the day it has been truly amazing <laughs> but then other nights we have just managed to drive around and park up um in the dark somewhere in a lay by or wherever um and that has proved easier than i think i expected i don't know about you how have you found having the van as a place of accommodation I just find it super easy because it's like your little house on wheels. You have everything that you need in there. Um, I, I I think I'm very proud of you, you know, for, for having coped with the, the wild nights as we call them. Um, I'm... I found I'm, them easy. Yeah. Like, I've really enjoyed driving around with you. Like, so generally, you know, in the in the when we've known we haven't got accommodation booked we sort of let the evening not that there's much time anyway but the mm. evening sort of draws on and then you know we're looking on the map we look on the satellite so we can see you know where there's dead end roads or where there might be you know it looks slightly lighter as in there's a pull in on the side of the road we tried that park for night thing i wasn't impressed by that what did you think of it? no i wasn't either but i think we were in very odd areas when mm. we looked there so quite out there hey yeah, yeah and just not not where people generally would pull up in the van yeah um google maps has been our friend though right mm, and just generally yeah. like we'd find the settlement we need to start from and then we would drive out of it yeah. just just drive out of it like not even really following anything as such um and we would look for obviously because it'd be late at night we'd look for a gate place an extra field that we could pull in and especially we'd look okay this is a pretty old gate it doesn't look like it's been used so we weren't too worried about farmers coming in the morning but that was usually my concern is I don't want to just get in the way yeah. but then generally we're out anyway at like eight in the morning nine in the morning depending on that and we could pull out any time as so soon as we're awake yeah. you can move the car you exactly know. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it you can be really comfortable and yet within a couple of minutes you know kind of grab your coffee you can move the van out mm. if you have to mm. um yeah we've had some some good wild nights haven't we yeah In absolutely no and you've you know you've done really well as well there's there's been the odd moment um where it's like that we're locking the car tonight. <laughs> so Anna sort of alludes at that because when it comes to wild camping, particularly, you know, right at the beginning of this year, um, I I found it really hard, hey? Um, and mm. last year, like, I've had some pretty nasty sort of psychosis episodes when I've been wild camping where, like, something we've heard has triggered my mind to just completely explode. Um, and it's just really, really scary. And this year I've done a lot of work on getting used to wild camping i went and did the dartmoor mm. way um which was five nights of wild camping um by myself and i think that's really helped but also being with anna and having a vehicle around you is also just a whole different experience like mm. now i have this wall to protect me from the outside <laughs> world but not as just anna, a sheet <laughs> not just a sheet but as anna says you know i think it's again being 
female as well we're very tuned in to things mm. that could spell danger and to like atmospheric feelings so where we have felt a bit unsure we have hit lock um and then usually had a good night's sleep yeah yeah, yeah absolutely snug <laughs> as a bug yeah no so so um to dive just a tiny bit deep deeper into accommodation we we obviously have the pop-up um mm. On the van that um, that acts as a bed, uh, so it's a it's a platform that you can push up and and it or you pull it down, um, where you can sleep on, and that is great after having added a, a second mattress topper because the the the, the foam foam you know sheet that is on there is just it killed that both first of night our man hits. we thought <laughs> why do people bother with vans <laughs> yeah we were both it was, like just it was awful <laughs> dreaming of going outside lying in the grass <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted softness um so but for me as a tall person you know i have to say the top is quite irritating because it's just not long enough i've seriously contemplated about going to you know my building shop and getting a, a plank to just add on the length because I have to sleep with my legs bent and that just it really hurts after a while um, so at the moment we're sleeping on the on the bottom bed which is just seats pulled out um, they make it a rock and roll bed that's what it's called yeah, yeah. rock and roll it's rock bed. and roll bed um, and we have our mattress toppers on there and uh, we just roll it up and it sits in the back um, during the day because then we chuck our backpacks and a couple of chairs and whatnot in the back on the seats um, yeah so so it's obviously it's a bit it can be comfier than a tent because I would say the first night in the top I, I would take a tent on a wooden wooden floor over there. <laughs> you were like I've had better nights on concrete. <laughs> I, I have. I don't yeah. understand that but I'm sure you were in a different no, it, state it was, of soberness. So. Oh it was um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, No the thing with the top though is it that's the compromise. You don't have the length but you have the width whereas mm. um, as you can see on the inside we don't have the width because we've got the cupboards on the side but we have a bit more length and, and you don't the, 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 you can let your feet dangle over so it's just more comfortable mm. yeah and it's just generally a softer thing so yeah. and i feel like snugger mm. being at the top is a bit more of a tent experience as well because with the vents you can get that bit of air breeze and stuff so it sort of it trades off and we've done some nights back up there and they've been they've been good mm. um uh, we did find that you know as it was getting colder outside the condensation was getting heavier in the van so then it would get a little bit damp um so that's another reason why we moved down so that the whole van can just ventilate a little bit better but no sleeping wise it's been we mm. we we're, we're sleeping you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think if it was like the first night we wouldn't be where we are today no. i think we also got used to actually having the the platform that kind of moves up and down depending on whether mm. you want to have the bed down or not um having that down but sleeping at the bottom, A, you can get out much easier for we in the night and you can use the top as your storage for stuff when it's wet outside because what we also, I mean that kind of goes into mm. a different topic here but um, what we have experienced that the awning and we just have one of those wheelie out awning things um, you just can't leave it out when it's actually heavy raining and a bit windy and stuff because it moves a lot and it's just a bit you're not going to have a good night's sleep because you're constantly worried that the thing is going to be taken out of your we van. tried that didn't we we um, lay there for like an hour like are you gonna go no, i'll go are you gonna go no i'll go, go. <laughs> then <laughs> i'm going like, oh. <laughs> um so that's just quite nice having the top bed as storage without then having to kind of in the night crawl over everything that you need to store inside um so it, it makes it quite handy i find anyway to sleep at the bottom having tried it all different yeah. varieties now 
The awning mm. has been a good addition, um, mm. you know, when we've needed to dry stuff out, hanging things from it, mm. when it is just a bit drizzly and it's not too windy, it's been a really awesome little shelter yeah. point. We keep stuff underneath it uh, over the night, it, you know, but it is that, and Anna said earlier, actually, when we were talking about this film, you, when you need the awning, you can't use it. You know, when mm. it's windy and rainy, it has to go away because yeah. it needs protecting and you, yeah. you can peg it down, but it's such a fragile little thing. We don't want to risk it. And of course, it's, I, I don't even think that the, you know, where you can peg it down is fragile, but it's, no, you the, have to imagine it's, there are max, I think four pegs that go into the ground and then you have a up to probably two by two meter, so four square meter sheet. That's going to pull out those pegs mm, within sail. no time. Exactly. So when when the wind is too strong or it comes in gusts, you just there's no chance mm. to use it. And and the water pours on top of it. Yeah, and, and then you kind of have yeah. to empty it every now and then, or otherwise you, you know, again you're lying there. It's like, is it going to fall through and rip everything apart if all of the water? <laughs> It's in a puddle up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's been a it's been a good thing to have though. Um, but you know the reason another reason why we're extra careful is this is not our van. We are renting this for this trip. Um, so obviously we're doing our best to take care of it as well. But then again, vans cost a lot of money. So even if it was ours, we would still take care of it. <laughs> yeah, probably, Just saying. Hopefully. <laughs> no, one nifty thing that actually a friend told us before we left um, was this really cool tip. And that's basically to get boxes that you can slide underneath the van. Mm. So that's really doubled up almost our storage. Um, and you know, we've got these two boxes, two plastic boxes that we got mm. that every day, they just sit in the footwell in the back. And then every time we park up, they just slide underneath the van. Um, only if it's absolutely tipping it down do we shuffle those into the front but that yes. is the key word shuffling our life yeah. is just a shuffle yeah. match every day it is you know it we we have done it um where we've had a wild night and uh it's been pouring down and um you can sort of even without having to leave the van necessarily you can get your stuff on the front seats still have space in the back do your cooking and eating and yada yada and then you can still sleep on the benches without having all of the stuff there so we leave the uh, seat just down because it's uh, just best for how I use it I quite like it there next to me um, when I'm driving it has a cup holder an additional one um, and it's yeah it's kind of it, it just works having it down um, and obviously if you now felt like you're, especially in wild nights, um, in a bit of a dodgy situation or you want to escape the situation without having to leave the van, even if you have something on the front seat, you can just grab it, pull it to the back, jump in the front, even I can fit, you know, through there, it's all wide and nice and open really, and you could just go. Um, which is nice to know. I've never heard this take on why the front seat is down. <laughs> Really? I never imagined that. I know. I it's just Skip because I, <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> it's um because I've had a few conversations with other people and you know they them doing a fair amount of wild camping in their vans and just women especially um, wanting to know that they can get in the driver's seat and just go without having to leave the van oh i see get in the driver's seat yeah i thought you just meant like escape to the front of the van like no, that's gonna help you no the back escape is on fire. from the situation that you're wanting to escape <laughs> just if you ignore it it's not in the back i gotta go to the front <laughs> hey. now i understand what you're saying yeah yeah yes yeah okay okay, mm. okay. yeah no fair enough yeah so we don't have you you see we don't have a curtain as such for the front so uh, oh, we just put a towel over the the chairs in the front and that kind of blocks it out nicely um but yeah to conclude i know you know a lot of people have their little curtain but they're or it's even like fully closed mm. up but they leave enough of a hole so to speak to be able to get from the back into the front to be able to drive away huh, interesting yeah and what about the people that put the whole f cover on the whole front window? <laughs> That's not helpful. Well, you, but uh, oh yeah, external. Yeah, yeah. See, we have we have those covers, but they really? have little suckers. Yeah. Oh, for, not for the so you can see how much time I've spent in this van, mostly <laughs> unconscious, <laughs> <laughs> eating or sleeping, <laughs> eating or sleeping. That's my life and cycling. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. Well, yeah. Mm. So as an accommodate, as a sleeping place, it's been good. 
Um, we figured that out, we're pretty happy with it. Mm. Next thing is again, not my area of expertise, much more yours, <laughs> cooking. So again, you know, if we, if we were camping, we'd have a little stove, which is essentially, you know, boil water, add it to something. You could bring like a transier or whatever, um, you know, some pans, pots and cook, you know, jet boil have got all their pots and pans. But here we have two gas rings and we've got the sink. Um, we have, I have certainly not been starved of wonderful delicacy. Um, and that is all courtesy of this one. <laughs> so, you know, you have been adamant to not allow mm. anything really to get in the way of, of good nutrition and flavour. No, no. And I knew, we knew that we were going to have a gas stove in there. I don't even know whether I was aware of it being two hobs as such. Um, but um, what I did is I packed two pots, um, knowing that at times, you know, I would have to cater for four um, and cooking pasta and making a sauce in a different pot. It was like, oh, okay, we're probably going to need two pots. One is bigger, one is small. And we, uh, I didn't actually pack a pan, but in my packing the van, filling the van up I found a pan in the van so pan in the van <laughs> I found a pan in the van which is how we ended up having a big pot a small pot and a pan um, do you think you would have ended up buying one a pan yeah no because everything I do in the pan I can do it in a pot in a pot yeah, yeah. that's why I decided not to bring a pan mm. I, I like using it a lot um, but it you could lose it mm. Okay, but well. it go as far that you could probably. Well, I don't know. Would I make the decision for two pots again? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I two pots so. it is then. Mm, I think, yeah. um, or a pot and a pan because then you can make a sauce in a pan as well and whatever your preference is. I I am ending up using the pan almost on a daily basis now. Um, yeah. So I was. I was very adamant from the beginning um, of not losing good food due to laziness, I would say it, or just compromising due to the lack of space or whatnot. I can chop vegetables wherever I am. Uh, I don't need a lot of space for it. There have been times where I've been slightly irritated because Abby has to come and go and come and go and I'm like, I'm trying to chop food here and it's just very unpractical to kind of move around while you're holding a knife and the, you know the chopping board is for cut vegetables or whatnot but it's all it's all very straightforward and um, I feel you can cook whatever you want to as long as it can be cooked in a pot um, in the van I don't at all miss an oven um, it's interesting because our our diet, I would say, mm, we use the oven a lot. At, at home. home, exactly. Yeah. We because we have our very much go-to meal, um, and I don't even want to say meals because it's one meal. Um, <laughs> and when something's good, why well, change it up? <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I've been missing cooking a lot, and being in the van actually has opened that space again for me because Abby has not been feeling like salad like our usual food for me the usual food mm. i've enjoyed eating because of the the strenuous nature of the project for me with the movement like i'm i'm still struggling with food like what i'm eating is such a narrowed down version and actually somewhat different to what i'd normally eat mm. just on mm. a day-to-day -day. like normally it's just constant color like i really i wouldn't touch anything processed at all and you know except popcorn but that doesn't count because as this one says separate stomach for popcorn right um, you it's know, just, it's just different it's life. Just different popcorn. life. <laughs> um, and yeah, like whereas this normally, you know, we'd have salad pretty much most nights with sweet potato and stuff. But I'm, I'm I, I want something warm when I get in and really easy to eat. Mm. So you, we've been make, you've been making a lot of lentils and bulgur wheat and quinoa and couscous and just all the vegetables mixed in with that. And I've been able to have a bit more spice, which normally I found really hard because I'm just I'm desperate for the warmth almost. Um, not a lot compared mm. to most people, but for me, a fair amount. 
and um yeah it's been really good every night has been somewhat different um different flavors different textures but mm. always homemade by this one and um, always inhaled by this one so and it's always you know we've not compromised on 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 anything um in regards to nutrition mm. we've we've kept it very colorful there's always a minimum of your five a day really and in, in not that that's a conscious thing but <laughs> no yeah. but it's we, we just with the camera guys when they come along we like this do this guessing game and, um, every night and usually it's, it's quite dark by the time we're eating so they're just eating <laughs> and so we're like so what's in it and they're like now they they both know what bulgur wheat is so every time it's like <laughs> bulgur wheat <laughs> it's like no <laughs> pasta <laughs> No, yeah. it's, it's 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 been very good. I I I'm very happy actually that you gave me, well, that your body was asking for more cooking freedom from me, and I've um I've very much enjoyed it. Um, and haven't felt at all restricted in what I could or couldn't do. Mm. No, that's it. So I've I've just mentioned the freedom of cooking that was given to me um by you in regards in regards to the food. Um, and and did mention also that it might at points have been a little bit tricky with the climbing over each other, because um, that certainly has has been a, a learning curve for us, hasn't it? Yeah, so van life has been a shuffling of stuff and shuffling of people. <laughs> so you know when Anna sat chopping and I'm having to come and go because I'm showering, I'm stretching, I'm sorting stuff out, putting it on charge yada 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 looking for food generally um you know it, it is a little bit tricky but we've just really we've learned to communicate you know mm. oh can i squeeze past you or can you move that back there and i move here or whatever or you know when you've got a minute can you pass me my laptop which is underneath the bed and yada 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 so it's been it's been a bit tricky with all of that i think as a working space because this you know we're still working on this trip as much as we possibly can um for me, it's not been very conducive at all for laptop work, but that's purely because I have to sit very upright because of my neck. As soon as I look down for too long, I end up pretty much with a constant headache just because of the pressure of my back, my back injury. Um, but then, you know, I've been able to put it on the countertop and sit there and do a little bit, which has be fine. When it's been sunny, you know, I've had it here on my lap or whatever. Um, and it's, it's manageable. I think as an actual physical home space, it wouldn't work for me because um, mm. in order to get in a flow like I have to be in a, in a in a bubble especially if you're not really in a comfortable position it's going to be hard to kind of get into that flow yeah yeah we've done well though we've done our best mm. and I think you know the nature of the project hasn't lent itself to doing a huge amount of laptop work which actually we're both grateful for in many ways because neither of us is naturally drawn to working on screens and that's one of the biggest challenges <laughs> But um, I think, you know, we can we make it work as a working space. And then just as a general living space, like, as I say, we don't, um, well, as Anna said, we don't really have the back seats up very much at all. So having it down means we've just got this big platform where we can lie, where we can sit, we eat sat on it, almost like it's a sofa. Mm. Um, and it, it works really nicely. You know, you can lean against the back of the van or the side of the van. And there is enough space so that, you know, there's, there's distance between us. So you, we can be sorting stuff whilst you're mm. cooking. I can stretch out there as well. And it, it, there are times where we both end up feeling like it's quite claustrophobic, um, but also other times where I think we get in it and it is our sanctuary. Um, yeah. So because it, it's it's only when when we are when we have to do some shuffling really yeah. that it gets claustrophobic, and otherwise it's just our little sanctuary. Mm. And because yeah. it's you know because it's such a small work surface space, especially because there's the charging unit coming up when you've got things plugged in around that, like it's just covered really quickly. But then also it's just a matter of minutes of putting things away in their space again. Mm. So it's sort of just take a deep breath, sort it out, then you, then it's good, you know? And yeah. we both get to that stage <laughs> in the evening or in the morning where the washing up is there. So mm. that's where, again, having the awning out, putting stuff outside is really helpful. Yeah. Um, one thing we actually really anticipated using a lot more than we have is a camping table. Um, so, you know, as I say, we, we sometimes Kate, sometimes we've got the four of us because we've got two film guys who come and go every so often helping us shoot film for Abbey Bikes Britain. Um, and, you know, at the beginning, it was always up every time I arrived at camp. You know, we were all sat around it, got cluttered very quickly. Um, mm. But then very, as soon as we were by ourselves, it never came out. Like, we don't need it. Um, we have and the we, two boxes, yeah. exactly, that we stock up, um, stack up. And uh, that's our little table. And it took up a lot of valuable space in the van. 
so um that we've sorted that now which is all good and uh it's it that has been noticeably nicer yeah. not having yeah. that metal thing prodding so you all the time we we've um we we got rid uh we put two chairs and a table into storage so to speak yeah and um we just have two chairs these two, these chairs, two chairs with us now and they are easy enough because we can make them fit as i as i mentioned earlier also in the front if it's raining if it's pouring down they fit in there with the packs and the boxes and everything and they're not really taking mm. any living space from us when we are just in the confined space of the van yeah and it is really cool to you know when we are on the wild ones i find it really cool that we just we exist within the entirety of the vehicle mm. nothing has to sit outside at all um, and we make that work and it's mm. not it's not really a compromise of space either no. it's just no. moving stuff that's yeah. normally in the back whilst we're driving into the front and that's it really yeah so yeah i think you know for me the biggest challenge is with the van have you know at times it's when it's been really really wet i found that hard um you know coming in with all my wet cycling stuff um, where i'm really cold we've had a bit of trouble with the heating um just gobbling up the gas so we've and we find found ga getting gas quite hard so we've yeah. really limited our use on that um and so i you know i have been getting quite cold but in general you know you haven't been that cold we, you were we mm. were very worried about getting cold on this trip and that has mm. not proved true at all really no um no. especially when there's two people generating body heat like it, it under a blanket you, you're fine hey yeah um, and then cooking you know yeah. cooking uh, whenever i'm cooking yeah. it's like oh can we open the door the yeah. window because <laughs> it's actually like getting door. quite hot <laughs> in there um with with the open flames yeah. um so yeah no overall it's i think there were there was the odd night where it got a little bit chilly especially when you have the pop-up mm. open and the bed so the platform kind of up as well because then there's quite a bit of space and the yeah. pop-up has only the canvas um and that obviously gets a bit colder mm. but overall yeah been i mean what other challenges have we faced with the van because there have been some like we have commented on things mm. Um, I mean, you know, well, just also keeping the foot bit, you know, we're coming in and out. Some campsites, for example, wherever we, you know, it might be quite um, muddy or stony and that ends up coming in. You know, mm. when we were up on Honester Pass in the Lake District, that was slate. And I ended up bringing in a lot of slate into our house. <laughs> but then it just had to dry and you sweep it out. I mean, it's not mm. a major thing, but it's something you don't think about. So having a yeah. dustpan and brush has yeah. been really helpful. Yes, absolutely. You want to make sure that you can reach the little gas cabinet which is um, for us located in the rear and it has a little um, hatch on the door um, so you have to open the door open the gas canister close the door then you can kind of use the stove um, and and that is just something to bear in mind because you have to turn it off before Mm, you start you driving drive. and there has been the odd occasion where it's like a mile in it's like no we didn't turn the gas off and, and that's tricky with the bikes on the back yeah, yeah. exactly because you can <laughs> you can only do it then obviously for us from inside and in the beginning <laughs> the first time when now it's only having to reach yeah. kind of over in the back but the first time the seats were actually up so my feet were literally on the roof and I was dangling down the folded up. Climbing over the chairs, squeezing through the gap, leaning down. Oh, it was quite comical actually. <laughs> just to turn the gas off. Yeah, yeah so um the water, we haven't been able to fill that up too easily. Um, because we haven't had a specific water pipe thing that the for the water like tank we've got. That's yeah, the one funnel. Too. We've got yeah. a water tank um in the van and also if you want to watch a full van tour, that'll be partnering this video. So click the link at the end or in the description. But um, yeah, that's been a little tricky initially mm. filling that up. You tried to create some out of old plastic bottles. Um, but then we ended up, what was it with Ad, Ad Blue? Ad Blue. Yeah. We, had to, yeah, we had to add Ad Blue. <laughs> um, and um, it, came with, it came with one of those typical fuel or whatever um, funnels that you normally screw onto the canister. And um, we, uh, we have purchased at some point a five litre water bucket and um, I just kept the funnel obviously gave it a good rinse um, so we're not adding add blue to our systems um, 
and just using that and that obviously is something that I did not think about at all most van van people um, probably have their little hose or whatnot that you can just connect at any um, camp so this one you just quickly fill your water tank um, but for us that's worked fine yeah. exactly that has worked fine and yeah. it's also very compact it's yeah. it's just it's a little cheap essentially exactly yeah. um yeah it works a treat mm. i suppose something else we could comment on that isn't a massive deal for us but is for a lot of people and that's toileting um we don't have a toilet in the van we haven't brought anything to go to the toilet in other than a popcorn bucket in absolutely essential moments that has not come out fyi other than to get ourselves into a campsite that required a toilet for entry so we proudly declared our popcorn bucket <laughs> they were fine um <laughs> fyi if you need to do, get in the popcorn buckets were great <laughs> but anyway um yeah so i think the only times where we've actually really considered or had the conversation about having a toilet would be when it's tipping it down outside um and you just we just can't get ourselves to go out, to go yeah. outside yeah. um you know because we've been on campsites with facilities and then otherwise it's been just hop over the fence into a field you know or jump in a bush kind of thing yeah and that's been absolutely fine for us but we're familiar with that so i think that's something really for a lot of people to consider um mm. you know whether a toilet's something you need uh but for us it hasn't it hasn't been a big deal really has it no, no. So, i mean if anything you know um you, you buy yourself an umbrella and even when it's tipping down you're good to go in the books that's it leave no trace though folks <laughs> so i guess now then to answer the final question which uh we've been asked a lot well the big question rather which we've been asked a lot is would we buy a camper van and i've had this question certainly aimed at me a lot before living in this van for two months um and i've always been you know somewhat skeptical i haven't seen its place in my life and I'm still on the fence, very strongly on the fence, because um, I'm loving it, but it works perfectly for this project. I think with regards to how I live life, and I'm saying quite I quite intentionally, you know, with regards to running projects through Wild, um, it's just, it's a big expense for what it would be used for. And, you know, I think it could make trips much more comfortable, but then you think about the enhanced costs of staying at campsites, you know, it's much more than a tent. Um, and I think, very much normally it's like okay i'm going hiking on this trip or you know we are working on this trip or whatever and so we don't need all the stuff that we have now and i think it would become a temptation to stress out and bring more than is needed uh, i've mentioned before that i thought a van could be quite helpful in wet weather and i think it's better than a tent in wet weather but mm. it's still a it's still not as comfortable as just going into a property and sorting yourself out mm. um i think if i could we could get a van that you know sort of had everything that we needed and didn't empty the bank that would be something that i would possibly consider but i wouldn't have a car in a van so then the van would be mm. the main form of transport so i don't have a direct answer i think it's still strongly like it's more a no i don't feel the need to buy a van mm. but if we had to could definitely make it work i think <laughs> that's that's my, my my five minutes on it like what about you um I've had, uh, during this project, a few of the conversations with people who have a van or have considered it and um, I think for, for me slash us, I would much rather continue going down the route of renting a van. Mm. I think, um, you know, the past few years have kind of really brought up a surplus on vans um and are now sort of a market that i wouldn't want to invest into but rather have some sort no matter whether it's owned by you know by a number of people or it's rented or whatnot but a a van that is used by a group a community of people um so that it's just in, like a van in, club yes so yes cool. Um, because I just don't think we would use it enough to justify it. Um, we could, but then the reality of it is that I don't think we would because certain things we want to do in a tent, certain things we want to do in a car because we want to be able to use a car because do not forget that 
all of the luxury a van comes with also come with the complications of having to always take house down before you can drive safely. Mm. It's not a chuck the tent in the car and you can go because mm. it's a taking the bed down, putting everything back into place, securing everything, you know, you can max kind of have your cereal bowls and your coffee mugs in the sink, but everything else has to be put away. So it's not as quick as kind of you know you probably are quicker putting your uh, taking your tent down and putting it yeah. in the car a little tent yeah Definitely. so so it's a bit um it's just a, a very different environment you would work with in regards to the trip that you want to do or you want to go on mm. um and i get i get yeah. the whole touring thing yeah you know go see a country have a van you know i i get that a lot totally um and that's in some ways what we're doing yeah but i think also well, yeah, I just, I, we're still on the fence. Hey, mm. We haven't miraculously gone, this is it, we've got to get a van, you know. Yeah. Um, we've, but we've really enjoyed it. And, but that's, that is my point, you yeah. know, it's beautiful to be able to say, I'm going to use a van for three months because I want to go and see Europe or mm. I want to tour through France or we want to go and see the UK in a way that, you know, nobody has done before or whatnot. But, then after those three months, after that trip of your dreams, how much are you going to use the van? Are you actually going to move into the van, which would justify owning one? Mm. Or could somebody else use the van for the rest of the time where you're not on that massive, great, big adventure? Um, I have an idea. Yeah. Maybe we should all club together and buy a wild van that then like travels the globe <laughs> and people go on super cool expeditions with it. How good would that be? And once it's been, you know, all the way over there, they have to kind of make their way home yeah. and the van goes on. Everybody has to put a sticker on it <laughs> and it comes back as this multicolored awesome vehicle. That wow. was so good, man. I love that. Anyway, <laughs> thoughts to be explored. Well, as you can see, we've talked long enough for the sun to disappear, but hopefully this has been somewhat insightful into our first together van experience. This isn't a holiday, this is a working trip, this is an, exp an expedition. Um, and that's why we felt like we had a voice to add to the pool of conversation around van life, because this isn't, we're not living the glamour, you know? Mm. We're really not living the glamour. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have such funny stories to tell. Uh, I was gonna say one, but I think that is oversharing. Uh, so I was, but I'm not gonna share it. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't just give them a teaser and then Okay, not tell it. we're wild camping and I get a knock on the door when Anna's there with her pants down like I ran out of blue rice. <laughs> Oversharing. So yeah, van life is not all about the glamour, especially when you don't have a toilet. <laughs> you asked for it. Um, so. Uh... Yeah, I hope, I hope this has been helpful for you. That's probably made you laugh at least. We're all about laughing every day. Don't worry, there's plenty she'll come back at me. You know what, the van tour video will be loaded, okay? It's your opportunity to let go. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, about that time. About that time. <laughs> well, you know, I'm generally very prepared, but sometimes in life, Life catches up with me. <laughs> All those lentils. Um, <laughs> <coughs> no, hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Um, do you want me to do all of that again or just let it go? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> let it go. <laughs> um, it's, been, it's been great fun. We've really enjoyed it. We've had some really good laughs. We've had some harder times, but I think anybody living in a, what is it, five meter space? Mm. Um, it's going to be tested at times. Mm. It's been both really. It's been the doom and the gloom of it all. Yeah. Because it's such doom a small... and the gloom. They're both bad. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. Oh. Doom and gloom. Doom and glory. A doom and glory. Let's go with that. How about gloom and glory? Gloom and glory. <laughs> it's been the gloom and the glory. <laughs> <laughs> because being in such a small space, you can get, you know, into each other's spaces quite easily but also you're forced to work it out because yeah. there's nowhere else you can go yeah, yeah. No, that's that really 
So yeah, thank you for watching guys. And if you do want to see a full lowdown of our van, which we've named Toby, you can find out more in the link below, also popping up somewhere up here. So click that as well. And uh, if you have any requests for videos with regards to the cycling or Abbey Bikes Britain, we're more than happy to oblige and explore and share because that's what we're all about here is spend more time in the world is inspiring and empowering people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health and to build meaningful connections with the natural world and with each, each other. other. Thank you for watching guys and until next time enjoy your adventures and stay, and stay wild. wild. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs>